Uh, for more on the Senegal inauguration, let's bring in Ambassador Gregory Okun, who is a scholar of international relations and strategic studies. Very warm welcome, Ambassador Gregory Okun. Uh, it's like a new dawn in uh, Senegal. 18 million people, very joyous, the youngest elected president in Africa at the age of 44. Is this a new hope and dawn too for the, for the youth of the African continent? Um, Christian, I would like us to look beyond the mere symbolism of age, the mere symbolism of uh, the euphoria of age and all that, and look at the forces that shape these developments. One of the vectors that shapes this development is populism. Populism is a global phenomenon that expresses itself in the form of disenchantment of the youth, most importantly, with political elites and uh, uh, establishments, political institutions. Yes, it is the, he is the youngest African president ever elected. But don't forget that he's not the youngest head of government ever. William Pitt was 24 when he became prime minister of the UK. We have to look beyond chronological age to something more important, and that is that populism. Populism brought uh, um, Macron, Emmanuel Macron, to power in France. It also brought, for your information, a man as old as uh, uh, Donald Trump in the U.S. People who had never had real experiences in government, institutionalism, and this is the force that has shaped this emergence of President Fire in Senegal. As far as I'm concerned, the age factor should only be one of the variables that should be looked at. It is not in totality. The, um, Look at the greatest playwright in the English uh, history, um, George Bernard Shaw. His first play was broadcast at the, when he was 94. The man who shaped and formed the American Constitution, Benjamin Franklin, was 84 when he wrote the American Constitution. Of course, we had people like uh, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, who, uh, whose symphony was uh, recorded at the age of seven. And, Golda Meir was uh, uh, the first prime minister of Israel at the age of 71. I am not discounting the variable of age, but I'm saying that the chronological age should only be looked at as a factor, mm. one of the variables okay. to be married into a whole matrix mm. of the individual's personality and capacity. Very well yes. said. And if we use uh, the kind of popular figure that fire has become in Senegal, and you put it side by side with his... 10 points agenda to, you know, um, redirect the affairs of Senegal. Do you think that some political watchers are skeptical, you know, uh, about uh, these because of Senegal's apron string attachments to France, their colonial master? Would France be a stumbling block for the changes and the challenges ahead for FI? Yes, I, I totally endorse and concur with that viewpoint. But it also depends on how he's able to maneuver from this to Papa. Remember, France is a member of the European Union. So France will not be acting alone, but will be acting with the support of the European bloc. Yes, France will be a serious factor to be considered. Um, remember Thomas Sankara. He was almost as young as he is. And it was a radical, radicalized activist, just as he is. Sankara was 27. Okay, uh, younger than he is. Okay, yeah. right. So, most of the African presidents that have tended to walk their way, walk away from the Western influence, have always faced tremendous difficulties, not only in terms of the implementation of their policies, but in terms of their security. How secure is he? He has to worry about his existential uh, uh, security. Existence. Existence, yes. Because uh, France is not a power to be joked with. Um, he is a, a member of the Francophone bloc, but how is he going to carry along the other members of the bloc? It is Either he carries the, them along or they carry him along from I mean, Mali, uh, Burkina Faso, and Niger. So we have to look at it as a magnetic pole. It can either attract or repel. 
So for him, uh, this 19-point program is welcome, but how is he going to navigate the waters? He has to build one very important ingredient that is lacking in African democracy, bipartisanship, even in his own country. What you find in Africa is that whenever a political party wins an election, it, it goes to the loan. It would not work in Senegal. He has to marry forces together, what I call bipartisanship. It is what will seriously provide him a momentum to implement these policies. Well, very well said. But how can the youths of Africa change the old political order, just like we've witnessed now in Senegal? Are the youths sagacious enough, effervescent enough to rewrite history as done in Senegal? Uh, well, Christian, one of the forces shaping current international relations today, is, and like, as I've said, is populism, mm -hmm. as it catapulted Macron. Into, yes, how will the, is a kinetic power? Mm. Kinetic power in the, uh, physics is a, a power that you can use, you can mold. Yes, the youth can. But, I, Christian, I refuse to endorse the viewpoint that your birth certificate is what makes you a youth. Sometimes even the thinking, the mentality. We have youths here who's, who only are devoted to Facebook, um, Nollywood, movies. And when we are talking of youth, we have to differentiate between those youths and the intellectually minded youths. Yes, they can reshape Africa, they can rewrite African history, but they have to go beyond age as a qualification. They have to build their manpower capacities and capabilities, which has to do with a lot of studies reading and so on, history and so on. Does FIRE, for example, does he have the capabilities because he's promised systemic change and greater sovereignty together with more African solidarity? So the African Union, Africa is a cornerstone in his policy. Strategic change, systemic change, he said, and greater sovereignty. Yes. That is possible, but what I want to, if I could advise him and advise even any other African uh, leader, what we need now in Africa is not geopolitics. In not geopolitics. Is Africa should divert its attention to geoeconomics. How is he going to? He cannot do all those things unless he can champion economic transformation in Senegal. He can bring about industrialization. Look at the UN's uh, system initiative for Africa. Senegal is well placed to translate this initiative, UNSA, they call it, to uh, industrialize Senegal, create jobs and all that, and empower Senegal economically. How rich is Senegal now? He cannot fulfill all those obligations unless he has a very strong financial base. And these days, thanks God to globalization, globalization has brought a new paradigm in international relations, alignment instead of alliances. Uh, alignment means you select your partners on the basis of your national interest. The national interest of Senegal should be economics, uh, economic development, economic transformation. Who are your partners? Who are you going to partner with to translate this vision into reality? So, and look at the Christian. Let's be, let's be honest, fair to ourselves as Africans. The four American companies, Google, um, Apple, uh, Facebook, Amazon, the total worth, the net worth of these four American companies are greater than, is greater than the whole economic worth of Africa. So African countries must change their, um, their, their look, their, their, their um, Outlook, their vision. Their visions, yes. Yeah. Their visions to uh, compete in a world of very advanced technology, very advanced competitive uh, economies like China is providing. Therefore, I, I think and I want to suggest to him and any other African leader, the need to build a strong economic base. All this talk about your politics and France, if uh, Senegal is very economical empowered now. Even France itself will not want to meddle with Senegal. But once you begin to focus more attention on diplomacy and all that without building economic base, you are not having the fundamentals to wield power. 
this is a non-polar world. And the, African, uh, the West African sub-region is a, a non-polar region right now. We are not aligned to the West. In fact, there's no polarity again. There's no Cold War. How do you use your resources, your energy in Senegal to wield a little power, even in the African, West African sub-region? It is important for him to make himself almost an indispensable member, make Senegal an indispensable member of ECOWAS. How does he do that? As a francophone uh, a country, uh, almost at variance with his other francophone counterparts, he has a lot of forces arrayed against him. And I hope that he takes cognizance of these uh, variables and weaves them into policy. Yes, we cannot but uh, wish uh, the new president of Senegal, Faye, all the best and to see that uh, he prospers geopolitically and economically because it will be uh, the good or it will be better for Africa. Thanks so very much. Ambassador Gregory Okon is an international relations and strategic expert. Thank you for coming. Thank you.